ask you guys a couple questions? Yeah, of course. Um, what brings you down here? We basically want to change, and we're fed up with everything that's been going on. So we've got to we're here to, it somehow. We're here to show our support that we want Main Street to be more important than Wall Street. Uh, I'm here because there is something seriously wrong with the system that we have set up right now. The rich get richer and the poor just get poorer. And the rich get tax cuts and they make more money but they're paying less taxes. I think that's pretty messed up. Well, you know, we're retired and we've seen what happened with Wall Street and our retirement funds that we've tried to put together over uh, many long years. I'm here to support the Occupy Wall Street uh, movement because I think uh, the financial sector and corporations in general have too much uh, influence in our politics. They should have none. Well, we're, we're both uh, former union advocates. Uh, we work for a major airline and lost that voice. Um, so we're here kind of as the aspect of promoting labor and the fact that we need labor, we need these rights especially for us in our workplace, not having those has, has been a drastic change for us. that my community will never climb out of poverty and continue to go down as generations grow. So. Not only are we here to stand up against Wall Street, but we're also here for everything else that we believe in. I've been waiting for this and been saying this needs to happen for the past couple years because I saw a long time ago that the system is, uh, you know, it's it's not a fair system. I'm a follower of Will Stone, Paul Will Stone. And if he is here today, I think he'll be screaming and shouting for the people of this state. In part, I'm here for my uncle, who is a driving instructor who never went to college. Uh, he does, he's got a job without health insurance, like 50 million other Americans. He needs a hip replacement, so he's grinding bone against bone. He can barely walk. Uh, he has to hide his condition from his employer so that he doesn't lose his job. He's, not, he's barely going to be able to make his house payments, and uh, he doesn't have health insurance. So I think that's one of a thousand messages uh, that, that people are talking about today. You know, I'm one of those people who doesn't have health care, um, you know, for various reasons. I'm self-employed, so uh, I'm definitely one of the 99%. So I'm here to, you know, eat the rich. <laughs> Although I like that it's wearing a crown. It's, clear, it's clearly the kingfish. Well, we're the 99% that don't have the money. Uh, but we still create jobs because we're consumers, and consumers create jobs. It's not the 1% wealthy that create jobs. They're not job creators. You know, we're done with the, with the same old rhetoric that they keep spitting in our ears, that uh, they're the job creators. They've seen nothing but record-breaking profits for the, since you know I was in grade school. And we're done. We're done. We need equal taxation. You know, if you're the job creators, where are the jobs? Because they're not in this country. I'm down here for uh, future teachers, students, uh, basically everybody who's looking at, you know, going to school all these years and coming out of college just to, you know, for debt. We have, we have a kid now. We have a four-year-old, and I think this movement hits home because not only does it affect us, but it's affecting our children. I want to support the young people who are behind them uh, to s say that this whole system is um, pretty rotten, you know. And I think that's a fact that has been forgotten, that this system is rotten, and they're going to suffer the consequences. I'll probably be dead and gone not too long away, but we want the young people to have a better, better deal than they're going to get if we don't work. So I'm here to work for them and the system. Well, I just wanted to protest. I've never experienced it, and I, I know that there's a lot of things going on as far as, like, in the education. And, um, like, for example, like, if my school doesn't get enough numbers, we might get shut down. I never got a chance to protest in the 60s because I was in the military. And uh, 
Well, I was in the military, so you know you weren't really allowed to protest, and so I missed that era of my life, the '60s. So maybe this gives me an opportunity to relive the youth, or part of my youth that I never got to experience at that time. Well, um, we are have a government project for an experiences project. And we heard about this and we thought it'd be uh, really interesting to come down here and just see what people are thinking and why people are passionate about this. What have you learned so far? That We've learned a lot about, yeah. like, about how like the government is taking all the money and so many people live in poverty and it's because, and because the government doesn't make like services available for them and that it's ruining our future. Yeah, we talked to these ladies and they we asked them, um, why are you here? And they said, your future. And that kind of really got to us and yeah. that kind of interest us, yeah. Because you don't think this stuff is going to affect you until but you really look at until it. You're out until you're some people tell you that. Yeah. You want to just tell me what you're doing down here? Well, we're, we're on, on a, a field, field trip. trip. Talk more about that. Um, we didn't want to sit in class. <laughs> so we had to go on a field yeah. trip. image of Minnesota as a very progressive state and then I believe over the years we've lost a little of that and we'd like to see it come back. Money out of politics, that is, would be the biggest benefit of this world <laughs> to everybody I think. Well, I'm retired now but you know I like to see my young children, my sons and daughters, well they want to work, they're having a rough time finding work. Kids are coming out of school with just loads of debt that a lot of them won't be able to even pay back. And we need to bail out students, not banks. We'd like to be listened to, number one. We'd like uh, for some laws to be changed. I work and I try to prevent foreclosures uh, for my job. I'm a community organizer, and um, nothing that we've been able to do uh, has been able to stop more than a few, a few dozen foreclosures. Um, the, the, the power structure needs to change. He's trying to support the movement. We got a lot of wrongs to try to right here in the country, and we're trying to get something started here. You know, I think that for right now, we need to think small and, and um, be glad that the conversations are happening. President Obama was forced yesterday during his uh, press conference to answer questions being raised by this movement. And so it's already been effective, and it's just begun.